Hi everyone, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we're on day 202. Welcome to the channel. We are going to be reading out of Judges chapter 7, Jeremiah chapter 20, Ephesians chapter 2, and then we're going to close out the day with Psalm 107, but only verses 1 through 9 today. So let's move into Judges chapter 7. Here we go. Then Jeroboam, who is Gideon, and all the people who were with him, rose up early and encamped beside the spring of Herod. Midian's camp was on the north side of them, by the hill of Morah, in the valley. And Yahweh said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel brag against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore, Proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and trembling, let him return and depart from Mount Gilead. So 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. Yahweh said to Gideon, There are still too many people. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. It shall be that those whom I tell you this is, shall go with you, shall go with you. And whoever I tell you, this shall not go with you, shall not go. So he brought down the people to the water, and Yahweh said to Gideon, Everyone who laps of the water with his tongue, like a dog laps, you shall set him by himself. Likewise, everyone who bows down on his knees to drink. The number of those who lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, was three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down on their knees to drink. And Yahweh said to Gideon, I will save you by the three hundred men who lapped and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, each to his own place. So the people took food in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of the men to Israel to their own tents but retained the three hundred men, and the camp of Midian was beneath him in the valley. That same night Yahweh said to him, Arise, go down into the camp, for I have delivered it into your hand. But if you are afraid to go down, go with Pura, your servant, down to the camp. You will hear what they say, and afterward your hands will be strengthened to go down into the camp. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, to the outermost part of the armed men who were in the camp. The Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like locusts for multitude, and their camels were without number, as the sand which is on the seashore for multitude. When Gideon had come, behold, there was a man telling a dream to his fellow. He said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream, and behold, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian, came to the tent, and struck it so that it fell, and turned it upside down so that the tent lay flat. His fellow answered, This is nothing other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. God has delivered Midian into his hand with all the army. It was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation that he worshipped. Then he returned into the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for Yahweh has delivered the army of Midian into your hand. He divided the three hundred men into three companies and put into the hands of all of them trumpets and empty pitchers with torches within the pitchers. He said to them, Watch me and do likewise. Behold, when I come to the outermost part of the camp, it shall be that, as I do, you shall do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then blow the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and shout for Yahweh and for Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him 
came to the outermost part of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, when they had put newly set the watch. When they had, hmm, let me start that again, I'm sorry. Verse 19, so Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outermost part of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, when they had but newly set the watch. Then they blew the trumpets and broke the pieces, the pitchers uh, that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets, broke the pitchers, and held the tortures, torches in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands with which to blow. And they shouted, The sword of Yahweh and of Gideon. They each stood in his place around the camp, and all the army ran, and they shouted, and put them to flight. They blew the three hundred trumpets, and Yahweh set every man's sword against his fellow and against all the army. And the army fled as far as Beth Shittah toward Zerarah, as far as the border of Abel Mahola by Tabeth. The men of Israel were gathered together out of Naphtali, out of Asher and out of all Manasseh, and pursued Midian. Gideon sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against Midian and take the waters before them, as far as Beth Barah, even the Jordan. So all the men of Ephraim were gathered together and took the waters as far as Beth Barah, even the Jordan. They took the two princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at Oreb's rock, and Zeb they killed at Zeb's wine press as they pursued Midian. Then they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon beyond the Jordan. Can I just say how much I love that? This, this part here where God is saying, Okay, you know what? There's too many people. And if we do this, Gideon, there's so many people, they're going to think that they actually overrun the Midians. They're not going to know that it was me. So we got we to gotta thin this crowd out so they know it's me. And so, you know, they're thinning out, they're thinning out. And then he gets to the water. And instead of taking the bigger group, he takes the 300. That cracks me up. That is so God. That is so God. Just moving through the impossible so that we can see him. I love it. All right, Jeremiah chapter 20. Get a light on. I can't see. Here we go. Now for sure the son of Emmer, the priest, who was chief officer in Yahweh's house, heard Jeremiah prophesying these things. Then Peshur struck Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the upper gate of Benjamin, which was in Yahweh's house. On the next day, Peshur released Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then Jeremiah said to him, Yahweh has not called your name Peshur, but... Magor Misabib, for Yahweh says, Behold, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends. They will fall by the sword of their enemies, and your eyes will see it. I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he will carry them captive to Babylon and will kill them with the sword. Moreover, I will give all the riches of this city and all its gains and all its precious things. Yes, I will give all the treasures of the kings of Judah into the hand of their enemies. They will make them captives, take them, and carry them to Babylon. You, Peshur, and all who dwell in your house will go into captivity. You will come to Babylon, and there you will die, and there you will be buried, you, and all your friends to whom you have prophesied falsely. Yahweh, you have persuaded me, and I was persuaded. 
you are stronger than I and have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day. Everyone mocks me. For as often as I speak, I cry out. I cry violence and destruction because Yahweh's word has made a reproach to me and a derision a derision all day. If I say that I will not make mention of him or speak any more in his name, then there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in. I can't. For I have heard the defaming of many, terror on every side, denounce, and we will denounce him, say all my familiar friends, those who watch for my fall. Perhaps we will be persuaded, and we will prevail against him, and we will take our revenge on him. But Yahweh is with me as an awesome, mighty one. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they won't prevail. They will be utterly disappointed because they have not dealt wisely, even with an everlasting dishonor which will never be forgotten. But Yahweh of armies, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance on them, for I have revealed my cause to you. Sing to Yahweh, praise Yahweh, for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. Cursed is the day in which I was born. Don't let the day in which my mother bore me be blessed. Cursed is the man who brought news to my father, saying, A boy is born to you, making him very glad. Let that man be as the cities which Yahweh overthrew and didn't repent. Let him hear a cry in the morning and shouting at noontime, because he didn't kill me from the, from the womb. So my mother would have been my grave and her womb always great. Why did I come out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? Yeah, I think many of us have asked that. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2. Let's see what Paul has to say. I'll bet you it's going to be a little lighter. You know why? Because I had pink. <laughs> Which means it's something I liked. All right, so here we go. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. You were made alive when you were dead in transgressions and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the children of disobedience. We also all once lived among them in the lusts of our flesh, doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy for his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and made us to sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before that we would walk in them. Therefore, remember that once you... The Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that you were at that time separate from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. 
but now. In Christ Jesus, you who once were far off are made near in the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who made both one and broke down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the hostility, the law of commandments contained in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man of the two, making peace, and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, having killed the hostility through it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father, so then you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, being built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together for a habitation of God in the spirit. Oh, I needed that. I have goosebumps. Can you see my the hair standing up? Oh, I needed that. And I hope you did too. He loves us and he wants us. Okay, Psalm chapter 107 verses 1 through 9. Let's close out this day. Give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Let the redeemed by Yahweh say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary and gathered out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in, the, in a desert way, they found no city to live in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. And then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. He led them also by a straight way, that they might go to a city to live in. Let them praise Yahweh for his loving kindness, for his wonderful deeds to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul. He fills the hungry. He fills the hungry soul with good. Yes, he does. The hungry soul. Is your soul hungry? Oh, my soul is so hungry. And he fills it with good. He sure did today. Thank you for stopping by today. I am truly so thankful that you're here. I just absolutely love reading to you guys. I know this channel isn't huge and um, you know, not a lot of followers, not a lot of views, but for those of you who do show up, I am so thankful that you are here to hear the words of God and to draw encouragement, daily encouragement, that um, while our road down here on earth, it is rough and it is bumpy, he's with us. He's with you and he's with me. And we just continue on. On we go, knowing that he has us and that, um, you know, he may not pick the perfect scenario that would be in our mind. He might pick just the 300 so that we can see him working in our lives. And for me, that is the very best day ever. So thank you for stopping by. Um, please come on back for day 203, which will be tomorrow. Um, Please remember, if you do like this channel and you do want it to grow, it is completely up to you. At this point, 
I'm just showing up and I'm just reading. There is nothing else I can do to get the channel to grow. It is up to you to subscribe, to hit the like button, and to share the videos. Um, but I'm happy either way. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.